name is Edward with the Prime Scales. Today I'm going to show you how to install a floor scale kit or a floor scale. Here's the tools you're going to need. Wrenches, wire cutter, screwdrivers, and torque wrench. You have a four pieces half inch threaded plate in your floor scale kit. And these plates need to be welded onto a deck plate. In this case, we have a 2x2 two two base with tubings. This is the structure we have. And you can be innovative to build your own base, but these plates need to be welded. Or you can, for a small capacity, you can mount the plate, drill a hole on the other side and use a screw and a nut to fix it, but it can only hold 1,000 pounds or less. Now we are ready to install the low cells. There is an arrow on the low cell, marked on the end of low cell, on the side of low cell. There's, in this case, the arrow is facing down. But no matter what, the arrow is supposed to point the deck plate. And when the floor scale is upside down, it's facing down. But when the floor scale is set up on the floor, the arrow is supposed to face up. Now we need to mount the low cell onto the plate. First of all, we need to get this cable through the tubing. So the cable is through here, and um, this is the job shape part. And I'm gonna go through the cable, through this part, so it can come out from here. So this cable needs to stay inside the tubing. So we're going to have this cable, because we want to install it nice and neat. So this cable, I will leave one foot outside, and make a tie, which means it's the far side away from the junction box. So the rest of it will go back to the tubing. And we are going to insert these cables into the tubing as well. And um, when you install the low cell, make sure this arrow, again, this arrow is supposed to face the deck plate. And between the low cell and this half inch mounting plate, you need to put that spacer. The purpose of the spacer is make sure the contact area of this low cell with this fixed base the contact area is all the way before this line. So the spacer will serve this purpose. Make sure the arrow is facing the deck plate. Here's the bolt. Where's the lock washer? I use my hand all the way to it's way too hard. Then we use this wrench. Usually we fix the one in the middle first because when you do the tightening the bolts with the torque wrench, you may change the direction of the load cell, which we don't want it to happen. So fix the first one to give more friction. The low cell will not move. At this point, we have to make sure the low cell is in the position. We 
should set the torque right, so you have exactly the same amount of force on the bolt. So one low cell is installed. Use the same method to install all the other low cells. Now install the feet onto the low cell. I would recommend all the way in. It's just a, like a screw that goes in and the low cell. The more it goes in, the more stable the scale is. Use the same method for the other low cells too. Now we have flipped up the scale. Now we're going to install the wires into the junction boxes. First of all, we, we have a short cable like this with a 4-pin male connector. This one is for the indicator connection. We use this, we call this a quick disconnector so we can use the long cable for the indicator when we are ready to change the cable or something happens to the cable so we can change the long cable instead of messing around the wiring into the junction box so in this case I'm going to install this first Now we have opened the junction box. Um, the junction box has uh, five connectors, and each of these connectors are supposed to connect with the low cells, and this one is supposed to connect with the indicator. And um, these connectors are marked with the E minus, E plus, ground, S minus, S plus. E minus stands for excitation negative E plus stands for excitation positive ground is ground S minus is signal negative S positive is signal positive so uh, you need to check the low cell with the, check with the low cell manufacturer see how the wiring color combination is before you mount the cables or wires into the junction box so in this case, we already know that the E minus is for black, the E plus is for red, ground is for purple or yellow sometimes, S minus is for white, S plus is for green. Now we're going to mount these wires into the junction box. And um, in the scale industry, we will define these corners so in the future if some corner has some problem so we can locate the wire very fast in the junction box instead of just testing around which one is which one so as you know that when we install the low cell we made a tie for the far side corner to the junction box and this side too we will define this corner which is the left lower corner of the junction box number one corner number one and I go clockwise this is corner number two which is upper corner of the junction box side the far side corner number three corner number four again it's one two three four and uh, these numbers should match these numbers in the junction box so this is corner number one, number two, number three, and number four. And don't worry, if you did something, you know, you will swap, swap the low cells and you can swap the back because these plugs are plug and play. So you can swap this one with that one when the wire is on. But we prefer we do it right in the first place. Now let's do the first one. So this is corner number one. 
Should we lose this cable grip? Insert this wire in. And take these wires out. Unplug the connector. Insert more. We are using Phillips screwdriver number one. Only this one will work well with these connectors. Phillips number one. Lose all these prongs. The mount the way matching the mark on the board. And make sure we mount the wires, make sure the plastic part will not be in between the prongs, otherwise it will not get a contact. So make sure the wire is, is not too long, which is, has an exposed wires outside like this, it may cause shortcut if we get a two cable too close. So basically the ideal way to insert the wire is you can see the metal part from the outside the wire but the plastic cover is not in between the two prongs inside every time when you put in the wire pull it a little bit make sure it's tight not loose and um, some problem will be caused by the loose wire Sometimes you can see it, sometimes you have to feel it. Just pull the wires. If you got a signal wire loose, you will have jumping numbers on the screen, on the indicator. If you have a loose wire for the black and white, you have ADO error on the indicator. You don't really have to remember this, but as long as you have the error code on the indicator, check the wires. When this is done, back up the wire cable a little bit and just plug in here. Make sure the wires in the junction box is not too long, not too short. Something like this is perfect. Tighten the grip and finish the rest of it. Now we have all the wiring done. Before we close up the junction box, Let's uh, calibrate the scale and do some testing because if anything goes wrong, we still can do most of the fix in the junction box. This is a PSI 202 indicator which comes in the floor scale kit package. To calibrate the scale, we need to open the plate on the back of the scale. This will expose uh, the toggle switch under the plate. Flip the toggle switch to the other side and turn on the indicator. Of course, we need to connect the scale base and the indicator. To plug in the cable, as you can see, there is a notch on the top of the connector. And there's a stopper on the scale base. This notch should match the stopper. If that's the case, it can go in really smooth. Lock the cable. Same on the other side. As you can see, the stopper right here, it's the same connector on the scale base and the indicator. The notch, match. Lock. First of all, let's go all the way to P11, which is the internal count of the scale. If we get the five digits, and then when you press the base, 
the number goes up or bigger, which means the wiring is pretty much good. I mean, it depends on the numbers. If we got a six or seven digits, it's not a very healthy number. But five digits, depending on different low cells, it's good. What if the number gets smaller, or we get a negative number? That's probably you install the low cell in the wrong direction. So we need to flip the low cell back on each corner. And then we have a little shortcut. You can swap the green and the white wire on the low cells, not on indicators, on the low cells. Swap the green and the white. You're gonna swap, it. it's the same result if you swap the low cells. Now this number is good. Let's move on. Press unit, we'll go back to P11. We need to go to P1 capacity. Press zero. We got dot and pound, which is good. Press unit. Press print. P2 division. Press zero. 0 0.2 pound, which is good. Press unit. Press print. The important parameter, we will only go through the important parameters. P10 is a calibration unit. Make sure it's one pound. If you want to calibrate in kg, change it to kg. In this case, we have 20 pounds to calibrate the scale. So, one pound. Unit. Go back to P11 again. We got this internal count. Make sure the scale is empty. And uh, if you want, put the whole weight onto this scale. It doesn't really matter on the PSI and 202 indicator, but this is really an empty scale. So press Negros to confirm P11. You'll go back to P11, press print, go to P12, press 0. You have a whole bunch of zeros. In this case, this we need to change the number to match the calibration weight. So press 0 to move the digits, which is to be changed. Press print to increase the number, or press tear to decrease the number. In this case, we need 20 pounds. So place the weight on the scale. Press negros. They give you C2 and all the zeros. If you put different weight, you can calibrate three times, which give you really, really good um, linearity points. In this case, we only have 20 pound weight in this video, so just press negros. So we go back to P12, remove the weight, and flip the toggle switch in the back, wait until it's warm up and it's showing zero. Place weight on the scale, it's not accurate enough, so let's check the corners, this is good. Good. And that's good. So uh, the scale is calibrated. And then we can close up the structure box and uh, the plate. But I'm not going to do it yet because we're going to show you some troubleshooting points. Troubleshooting number one get a negative number. If we get a negative number, this indicator will not be calibrated during the calibration. It will give you error zero during the calibration, not the weighing mode. But before the calibration, even if it shows zero when you press the scale, it gives you a negative number instead of positive number. To fix this issue, we have two ways. The best way is to flip the low cell direction, which is Low cell right now is upside down, so you need to flip it over. Then the number will be positive. The second way is swap the low cell wiring in the junction box. Green and white wire, which is signal. Signal positive and signal negative. If you swap these green and white wires on each low cell, 
or you can check the corners, see which low cell is in the correct direction and some low cell is in the wrong direction. Well, it's so messed up, but um, if that's the case, we can check which corner is bad, then we swap the wire. And after that, recalibrate the scale. Second problem, error message. And sometimes we'll see ADO, and sometimes we'll see OUR. Let's try to simulate the OUR. As you can see, it showed OUR. So OUR is out, which means it's out of the range of the signal. ADO means there's something definitely wrong we need to check up. So with this problem, it's probably the wires inside the junction box, junction box or this outside cable get uh, run over by a forklift or this connector was totally messed up or we get a water inside the junction box because this junction box is water resistant but not waterproof so it's still possible that water get inside and um, I would say that our best shot is the long cable because it's outside once the scale is working and this junction box is closed up it's um, not likely that the wire is going to lose but um, it's still a good possibility that um, if anything else is right so we can the last step to check the ADO or OUR problem is opening the junction box see if there is a loose wire inside sometimes if we don't install the wire tight enough and it's still touching the prong but during the vibration it comes out then it will cause these problem so well I intentionally messed up some wire inside so we need to fix this takes it out and put the wires back in this is the excitation wire up. This one. As you can see, we already see the numbers because when I unplug the problem section, because it's totally disconnected and the other low cells are already working. Of course, it's not accurate without this low cell. We can see the wiring is back to normal. Plug in. Zero out. There we go. The next problem, we have uneven readouts on each corner. This problem lies in the difference of the low cells or the difference between the connection especially these electron electronics parts so well if the low cells are so different if they are not even the same kind or the same capacity um, not the same brand if it's the same brand but the same specification it will be it will work perfectly um, but um, if you have a wrong sensitivity like two millivolts, three millivolts, they won't work together like that. So make sure to check the low cells. If you get it from the original package of the four scale kit, then you probably get the uh, correct low cells. But if you are trying to fix a scale and replacing one low cell, then that low cell needs to match the other three. Otherwise it will not work very well. So, uh, well, even uh, we have same brand, low cell, same specifications, we will still have some small discrepancies. In some cases, it's not allowed, especially legal for trade. In this case, the corner I already adjusted 
Right, but uh, we can do the fine tune, so we need to go to the parameter mode and pull out the raw number, which is P11, and you will see the difference. Quarter number one. 17 to 50. 17 to 45. 17, wow, that's impressive. 250. 17, 255. 252. So, looks like these corners are pretty good. Well, this corner is only two divisions up, which is already very impressive. But uh, I'll adjust it, I'll show that's the main purpose. So I'm going to show you how to adjust it. So, now we have three points up. We need to find this corner, which is corner number four. And on this board, corner number four has an electronics part right, right beside it. And there's an adjustable screw on the top. And you can turn, use a, the smallest the flathead screwdriver, you can turn the screw on the top of the electronic part. Electronic part. This corner is too low, we need to do clockwise. And um, a little tip for you is do all four of them if necessary instead of just do one and then check it out. You know, if you do one, it's gonna affect the other ones as well. So we need to do four, we need to make a plan. For example, corner number one, go up two turns, number four, go down three turns. Something like that. We have to do one cycle each time. Instead of just do one and test it, and uh, simultaneously, you're gonna change these ones because of the circuit. In this case, only one quarter has problem. We just need to do a counterclockwise. It's going down. Why I was going up? Because when I touch it, I give a little bit force to the scale. But when I leave this, it's actually going down. To adjust the internal count, it's really fine tuned. So sometimes it won't repeat that well because it's very sensitive. So yeah, we are close enough. Then we can just check the other corners. As you can see, it may change the other corners too, but it's really close. That's close to 250. And this is, it was 251. Oh, uh, it's only one division off. So if we only have this small discrepancy, we don't touch this again because it's good enough. The next problem, is um, how to check which corner is bad. If we, we have some issue with the scale and the indicator shows ADO, it show different numbers or uh, whatever, it's not working. Well, how can we know it's the low cell or it's the board? There's a, a pretty fast way on our junction box because these plugs are plug and play. So for example, we have a higher L1, which is low cell number one, and a higher number two, low cell number two. They have different numbers in the other corners. Then what could be wrong? Is it a board or the low cell? What we can do to test is unplug these two and swap it in there the other place. If we swap it, if the problem stays, so this corner has a problem, but well, after swapping this, the problem is still here. That means the low cell is bad, or the low cell cable, anything related to the low cell is bad. If the problem changes, 
If we change one and two, and the problem move from number one to number two, that means something is wrong with the board. So that's the simplest way to to check. And if you have ADO or OUR or any error message from the indicator, what we can do is just disconnect all the low cells. If you still get a reading, the ADO goes off. That means at least this indicator all the way through here is good. But if you still get an ADO or anything like disconnect the cable here, disconnect the connect the cable here because if the indicator is disconnected with the cable it will show some number of course it's not accurate but uh, at least you can pull, pull out the P11 like I showed you before now what if the indicator is working now we can check the low cells one by one see if the low cells are working so we I plug in number four and I place some force on it and it's going to the uh, correct direction let me zero it out. So press number four, it's working. So that means this slow cell is working. If it's not working, unplug it. If it's working, you can leave it on. Pl press another one, which is number three, which is that corner. Zero it out. Check. It's working too. So then the next one, which is. Uh, Number two, zero it out. Two, it's working. Last one. Now you can figure out which low cell is bad. As long as you plug in, it gives you the ADO or OUR or any error message that means that line of the low cell is bad. So you're gonna check further of these ones. Next, I'm going to show you how to check if the low cell is good or not. Here, I'm going to show you how to check if the low cell wiring are good or not. So, in the floor scale shear beam low cell, the resistance, you need a multimeter with the resistance meter to check the low cells. The green and the white, it should be very close to 350 ohms. And um, the red and black, it should be close to 380 to 395 so this is within the range so that's the way to check if the low cell is good or not and um, any low cells between each other should not have a shortcut no matter what number it is it should not have any shortcuts which is zero that's the way to check the low cell. Last but not least, some very simple problems like um, if we get a water inside this juncture box, I mentioned this before, again, this could be a very common reason why the indicator, uh, why the scale is not working. Um, for years, it accumulates water or moisture and it gets water on the bottom and uh, it messes up with the circuits. And uh, sometimes, before you even do any checking, check your feet. If you feet, if the feet are installed into the low cells, if it's not installed, the indicator will show zero, but won't give you any reading. Do not calibrate the scale without the feet. We're gonna mess up with the calibration. Now we have calibrate the scale and troubleshooting all the possibility which can cause the problem of the scale and um, hopefully you enjoy the video and uh, hopefully it can help you with the installation of the floor scale kit or fix your floor scale. If you do have any questions, we have a ticket system located on primescales.com, P-R-I-M-E-S-C-A-L-E-S.com. My name is Edward, thank you for watching.